Uh, thank you, Steve. Uh, it's not necessary for me to say, but I will say, because this is a tremendous privilege for me to be able to speak with you today, and it's certainly an honor for me to be able to talk to you about what I'm going to talk about. That is, one, the greatness of the NFL and the Hall of Fame, and protecting the shield, the NFL shield. <clears throat> what is the NFL shield? It is the NFL brand. It's what football is identified by, and it's what you are now becoming part of. I'm also here to talk to you about you. What is your shield and what's your brand going to be? We all have heard about the NFL all week and how important and how great and how wonderful it is. And we want to be sure that we emphasize that that's the family that we're becoming part of, the NFL. It's fitting that we're here today and we're ending your tour here at the Pro Football Hall of Fame because really this is where it ends for the great football players. Fortunately, I'm one of those guys to be a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. <clears throat> what I want to share with you too is beyond that and to say the NFL is also about you. What we need to do and what we want you to understand is that we want you to make the best of your time here while you're a football player in the National Football League. And one of the things I will emphasize to you is that I am part of the uh, player engagement team in the fact that I am interested in how you mature throughout your career and how you end your career. So it's important that you look at uh, the things that are being offered, the things that you've looked at today, because one of the problems is that the career of a professional football player is a very short career. So you have to begin thinking about what your life is going to be like after you leave the NFL. I develop a program that I call Game Plan 2, and soon it will be inst instituted into the National Football League, but it's designed to help you continue to grow and continue to develop in your own personal life at the same time while you adjusting and accomplishing uh, in your career. Already you are an elite group of young men. You've worked really hard to get to where you are today. You're already a, an exceptional bunch. You made sacrifices to get yourself here today. As you've heard these men say on the video, it's going to take even more to stay here and to maintain a level of excellence that the NFL requires. What I want to talk to you about is you've made the sacrifice, you're going to continue to make that sacrifice. I want you to be able to leave the game with the things that you so dearly earned. I heard a speaker that was talking with the group the other night, he talked about the NFL is like a drug. And he couldn't have been more appropriate because I think it's probably one of the most powerful drugs that you could have. The idea of fame and fortune, the cheering crowds, the, the, all the stuff that goes with it, the, 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 the accolades that come to you as a player, and you can see the excitement. And I know we talk about how you get the, uh, the feelings just from watching the films. It is, it is enticing. It is addictive. I talk about something that I call heroism. And heroism is simply the idea is, is that players, when their career is over, they are not really prepared to move on and continue their life beyond that. That's a problem because, as I said, the average career of a professional football player is very, very short. So there's a lot of life after that. And this may be uh, hard for you to grasp right now. I know for me it would have been. But it is an important thing for you to, to think about. Because as you move through this period of your young life, you want to also be preparing for the next period, and that is your life 
after football. It happens because you have dedicated yourself to getting here that many times we become what I would consider unbalanced or heavy ended on, on one side. And that's okay, that's appropriate. It took that for you to get here. But now we want you to sort of begin to spread out and begin to take on some of the additional values that it takes to be successful. When I talk about professional football, and I had a conversation with the, the player engagement people just prior to my, my coming here last week, they talked about some of the things that they felt were important for you to understand and, and to grasp in and, and your time here during this symposium. They talked about things, of course, obviously protecting the shield, understanding the value of what it is that you're becoming a part of. They talk about uh, what is your legacy going to be? That's something you need to think about. What are you going to leave behind? Like these guys, they left a tremendous legacy. Why is the game great? We'll talk about that in just a minute. But also, what is your social responsibility? For me, this has been a long journey because I go all the way back to the days of Pete Rozelle and, and uh, Commissioner Rozelle was uh, obviously way before your time, but he accused me of saying, hey, I was overzealous for the player. You know, you, uh, I really was looking out for the player. But I want to commend Commissioner Goodell, who talks about your playbooks, and he talks about the journey. He's picked up the ball and picked up the pace, and he is setting the example that you must follow. Uh, Mr. Perry talked about the Hall of Fame, it's an exception. My rookie year in 1964, I was a uh, Look All America in 1963, the year that the Hall of Fame began. On that team were guys like Roger Staubach with the Cowboys, uh, Gail Sayers with the Bears, Dick Butters with the Bears, Bob Brown went to the Eagles, and me going to the Minnesota Vikings. I can tell you stories about all of these guys, but I'll just tell you stories about one of them. And the one I'm gonna tell you is about Bob Boomer Brown. Bob was a big offensive tackle, one of the first 300 pounders in the league. And they call him Boomer because when he'd hit you, you'd hear this big sound. You could hear it all through the stadium. Even in a crowd among 60,000 people, he'd go boom, boom. And when we collide, that's what you'd hear, boom. Bob also had an injury to his right hand, and he had it in a cast, and he had his entire his wrist, and he had his thumb in a cast. It was like a billy club. And of course, I respected him, but this billy club made him even more fearsome. And so in this game, he caught me right in the ribs. I wenched, of course. It was obviously quite painful. I looked over to the sidelines, maybe to take a break. In those days, you didn't get much of a break. But this was one time I felt like I needed one, and I wanted one, just to get my burns back. Chuck Foreman, off, our offensive uh, all-pro running back, tells me this story is, is that as Bud looked to the field and he wanted to give me a break, and we had two big defensive linemen we called the Larry Brothers, because their first name was Larry. You know how athletes, they make stuff out of nothing. And, uh, and, and Chuck tells me that uh, when Bud was calling these guys' name, they ran down to the other end of the bench to hide because they didn't want any part of what they were seeing out on the field. But let me explain something why I'm here. I'm really wired up today. I have microphones from everybody. But I want to tell you so that you understand when I talk about heroism and what it is, because it sincerely is a killer deadly disease. And I want to show this to you because I had an, a 
experience not long ago, I really woke up in a bed that I'd been sleeping in for many, many years. It was my home. It was my bed. Of course, that's where I slept. But I woke up one morning, actually it was during the night, and I didn't realize where I was. I went, it was totally unfamiliar to me. And I went, whose house is this? Where am I? Then I realized that where I was, I was in Carl Eller's house. Carl Eller the hero. Carl Eller the Hall of Famer. Everything that I had, everything that I had done, belonged to that guy. So I went like, whoa, I want to be this guy. Who wouldn't want to be this guy? But when I would leave, I felt naked and alone. It's a different world over here by myself. So I go back to this guy because that's who I was and that's how I identified. I've talked to some of you here while I've been here. I've been talking about going through the dark. At least some of you have heard me talk about that. What I'm talking about, and there's some guys in this room that have been where I've been that probably have a slight understanding of what I'm talking about. Because for you young men, it starts out with the Friday night lights. The Friday night lights and they get brighter in college, and they burn really bright in professional, in the NFL. And they burn so bright, you just, it's a fire. You can feel the fire in this film and this video. It's like a white hot iron in your heart. But when you leave the NFL, the lights go dim. And guys can tell you that have been through it. When you walk off of that stage, it does become dark. So what I want to tell you guys is that you can prepare yourselves now by taking advantages of the things that you've heard this time that you're here, by preparing yourself, by taking advantage of all the resources that player engagement offers, so that your light doesn't go out. And that when you leave professional football is, is that you leave with the understanding that you have given it your all. Don't be like some of the guys we talked about, the Larry brothers, accept the challenge. The challenge to be great, the challenge to reach down inside of yourselves and in your hearts to be the best that you can be. When I talk about heroism, it's something that can be overcome because you'll spend a great deal of time here today and the rest of your lives wondering if you have given it your best, if you have given it your all, and you'll want to do that. When I talk about going through that period, I'm now at a period where I love the jacket. The jacket is great. I've come and accomplished that. But it doesn't identify me today. I am still Carl Eller, the Hall of Famer. But I'm also Carl Eller. I'm Carl Eller, and I've come through the dark, and I see the light. But there are a lot of guys out there that are still in the dark. They have, the lights went out when they left professional football. I'm here because I don't want that to happen to you. Your light can shine even brighter, and it may even be impossible to think about that today, right now, because you've got a challenge ahead of you, an enormous challenge ahead of you. But there are possibilities that when you leave here, that your light can continue to shine and shine just as bright. Remember the guys that paved the way 
that lit the path for you. When you leave here today, I want you to know that you are part of this family. And this is a day and this is a weekend or time that you're going to remember the rest of your lives. I want you to leave here with no regret. When you leave here, go back to your homes and your hometowns and to your teams dedicated to being the best that you can be. Challenge yourselves to be great. Challenge these men that are before you that you can do it better. That's what it's about. And I don't know if you can do it much better than I did it. <laughs> but that's the challenge to you. Good luck to you. Have a good 4th of July weekend. And training camp is right after that. Have a good training camp, guys. Good luck. God bless you. Good luck.